Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. Hi, and thanks for clicking on the video. So today we are doing a conspiracy video. This story is insane. As soon as I heard the story, I knew I was like, I have to look into this. And the more I looked into it, the crazier and weirder it got. So let's get into it. It was May 1st, 2020, and 60 men armed with less weapons than they would have liked made their way towards Venezuela in two small fishing boats. The boat ride was rough from the beginning. The boat ride was so rough that many of the men were vomiting off the side of the boat on their way to Venezuela. Among those men were two ex-US Green Berets, Aaron Berry and Luke Denman. If you don't know, Green Berets are the Army Special Forces. They're supposed to be the best at counterinsurgency and counterterrorism missions. For these particular men, the mission was to overthrow the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, and replace him with Juan Gui... Gui... Okay, how the fuck do I say this guy's name? Juan Guaido. Juan Guaido. Guaido. Like why though? Guaido. Guaido. Got it. So President Maduro is believed to have cheated in the elections to stay in power for a second term. Guaido claimed to be the rightful president and the world was split. You had the USA, the European Union and some Latin American countries who said the election was a sham and they recognized Guaido. And then you had Russia, China, Iran, and Turkey who said the elections were legitimate and they supported Maduro. Now the leader of this mission is a man by the name of Jordan Goudreau. Now Jordan is a three-time Bronze Star recipient, so he's a veteran, and founder of Silver Corp USA, a small Florida-based private security company. Jordan is also the CEO of snitching. He was in a separate location while these 60 men were on the boats trying to complete this mission in Venezuela. He was publicizing the mission as it was occurring on the internet for everybody to see. Here's the video. 1700 hours, a daring amphibious raid was launched from the border of Colombia deep into the heart of Caracas. Our men are continuing to fight right now. Our units have been activated in the south, west, and east of Venezuela. Commander Nieto is with me, is co-located, and Commander Sique is on the ground now fighting. El objetivo de estas palabras es primero. Now Jordan would continue to reveal details as the mission progressed. His company, Silver Corp, they tweeted about the mission on May 3rd. Strike force incursion into Venezuela, 60 Venezuelan, two American ex-Green Beret, at real Donald Trump. The same exact day that that tweet went out was when the boats were intercepted by the Venezuelan army. So this is how it all went down. The first boat made its way towards a town near Caracas. The second boat was intercepted. That second boat got into a 45 minute firefight with Venezuelan authorities, helicopters, snipers, and even angry fishermen were shooting at the boat. Many were killed. We don't know exactly how much, but at least eight were killed. 13 were arrested, and that included the two ex-Green Berets. President Maduro came out and claimed that he knew everything about the attack. He said, quote, we knew everything, what they talked about, what they ate, what they drank, and who financed them. I mean, it's not hard to believe that he knew because the guy who was running the operation was live tweeting it. To understand how this plan came to be, you need to understand the two men who hatched this plot. Jordan Goudreau and Sliver or Cliver Alcala. Yes, I said it wrong. Yes, I'm sorry. Moving on. So Jordan was inspired to create his company, Silver Corp USA, after the 2018 school shootings in Parkland, Florida. This was a Florida-based company. 
Jordan wanted to fill what he called, quote, the hole in the lucrative school security market. Jordan's idea was to have ex-special forces operatives embed themselves in the schools and pose as teachers. And his business plan was not to charge the school for this service, but to charge the parents of the students a monthly fee of $8.99. He said, quote, the beauty of this is it's all for the price of a Netflix subscription. But this idea never actually came to fruition and Jordan would meet someone who would set this whole plot into motion. While Jordan was doing security for billionaire Richard Branson's concert, he met Alcala. Alcala was a retired military general for the Venezuelan government. As the concert was winding down, Alcala and Jordan met at a hotel to discuss this plot further. Alcala explained to Jordan that he wanted to have two teams go into Venezuela and kidnap President Maduro at his presidential palace and then install Guaido in his place. Jordan told Alcala that he could help arm and train his men and that he also knew top people in the Trump administration. And this is where JJ comes into play. In August 2019, Guaido appointed a man by the name of JJ Rendon to lead a secretive committee to explore new ways of achieving their goal, which was to remove Maduro and put Guaido in his place. So JJ had looked into several possible options, including hiring a private security firm, but JJ said that the prices were insane. He was being charged one billion or one and a half billion. So Jordan made a pitch to JJ. So Jordan's selling point was the price. Instead of $1 billion, he was charging a very reasonable fee of $212 million plus a 1.5 million retainer. Then Silver Corp and Guaido's committee signed a contract. Section 4A of the attachment reads, an operation to capture slash detain slash remove Nicolas Maduro. And whose signature is right there in black and white, but Juan Guaido. Now, despite his signature being on the document, Guaido denies any involvement in the planning of this coup. Okay, now JJ says that after this contract was signed, Jordan started behaving erratically. JJ says that Jordan couldn't produce any proof that he had the connections, the means to get the people, or the weapons and that nothing had really come from his promises. Yet, JJ says Jordan consistently demanded for that 1.5 million retainer fee. JJ revealed text messages from Jordan which say, quote, I will get the 1.5 the legal way. What a shame. We gave this to you on a silver platter and you fucked the whole thing up. A month later, Jordan and JJ met and they had a big, big fight. According to JJ, after that argument, he thought that the deal was completely off and done and dead. But Jordan didn't think that. Some people also say that Jordan went ahead with this attack because he desperately wanted the money, he wasn't able to get it from them, and instead of getting it from Guaido and his people, he was thinking that he could get the bounty because at that time, there was a $15 million bounty set for the capture of Maduro by the US government. And this is when it becomes like a really bad movie. The Venezuelan government arrested two more men who were involved in this plot, and when they arrested them, they found a cache of weapons. Among those weapons was a rifle, but it wasn't any normal rifle. It was an airsoft rifle, which people were able to determine from the logo. People looked into it and discovered that that was the logo of an airsoft rifle company. Now, if you don't know, airsoft is like a replica gun. It's a BB gun. They tried to overthrow a government with BB guns. Not funny. It's not, it's not, it's not funny. It's not funny. <clears throat> now, adding to the speculation of US government involvement was Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's statement. He said that he, there wasn't any direct role in the operation. This led some people to say, oh, why did he specify direct role? Does that mean that the US had an 
indirect role. Now, other people think that this is what's known as a false flag. A false flag is a covert operation designed to deceive, creating the appearance of a particular party, group, or nation being responsible for some activity while disguising the actual source of responsibility. So, you know what time it is. It's conspiracy theory time. The main most popular theory that I found when I was looking into it was that this was a CIA plot that went horribly, horribly awry. Let's explore this theory a little bit. First of all, the notion that the US government would be involved in a clandestine operation to overthrow a government in Latin America is not as far-fetched as you would think. There's actually a lot of instances where this has happened before. I actually learned about what I'm about to tell you when I was in college. I double majored in political science and history. Totally useless degree, by the way. That's why I'm sitting here making YouTube videos, but that's beside the point. Now this happened so many times, I'm not gonna bore you with every single one, but I'll just give you the most notable instances of US intervention in Latin America. In 1961, the famous Bay of Pigs, which was a failed invasion to overthrow the Cuban leader Fidel Castro, Reagan administration, which backed the Contra forces against Nicaragua's government. In January 2009, then National Security Advisor John Bolton, he, in a press conference, invited Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to, quote, occupy a nice beach somewhere far away from Venezuela. There's even a photo of John Bolton at that conference with a notepad and they zoomed in to the notepad and it read 5,000 troops to Colombia. So all the way back then they were planning some sort of military in intervention in Venezuela. Colombia would be an allied area where they could set up a base to attack. Maduro remained defiant, so in March 26, the Trump administration indicted Maduro on narco trafficking charges. In response, Maduro <laughs> called Trump a quote, racist cowboy. Sorry for laughing, you can't make this shit up. I don't know if you guys remember this. You know, like when the Trump administration was doing all these coronavirus daily briefings, do you remember that one briefing where they started out by talking about how they are doing a war on drugs? Then he had members of the military and the Navy, and they talked about how they were gonna deploy certain aircrafts and ships and people to fight the war on drugs. Do you remember that? Well, shortly after that is when this plot happened. Then people like to bring up the fact that there is a connection between Silver Corp and Donald Trump. There's photographic evidence of Jordan doing security through his company Silver Corp for Trump at a rally in Charlotte, North Carolina in October 2018. As of me filming this video right now, it is um, 9.45 p.m. Wednesday, May 13th. The latest news is Luke and Aaron, the two ex-Green Berets, are charged with terrorism, conspiracy, and illicit trafficking of weapons of war and criminal association. These charges carry a maximum of 25 to 30 years. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that the United States is doing everything they can to get these men back to America. JJ and another official of Guaido's team have resigned and Jordan is being investigated by United States law enforcement for arms trafficking. I am dying to know what you guys think. Please, please let me know in the comments what you think happened, who you think is behind it. Just let's bounce ideas off of each other. So me personally, what I think is, I'm not 100% sure obviously, but there may have been support from the government like in the early stages but I think towards the end, like when the mission actually happened, I think they went rogue. And the reason why I think that is just the materials and the amount of people. It To me, if the United States government was going to do a coup of another government, I don't think they would send 60 men in those rickety ass boats with BB guns. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.